الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلا هادي له ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد ان سيدنا ومولانا محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله تعالى عليه وعلى اله وصحبه وبارك وسلم تسليما كثيرا كثيرا اما بعد فاعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قال الله تبارك وتعالى إن هذا القرآن يهدي للذي هي أقوم ويبشر المؤمنين الذين يعملون الصالحات أن لهم أجرا كبيرا وأن الذين لا يؤمنون بالآخرة أعتدنا لهم عذابا أليما صدق الله العظيم اللهم صل على سيدنا مولانا محمد عدد ما ذكره الذاكرون وصل على سيدنا مولانا محمد عدد ما غفل عن ذكره الغافلون اللهم صل وسلم على عبدك ورسولك اللهم صل على سيدنا مولانا محمد أفضل صلواتك بعدد معلوماتك My respected brothers and sisters and honorable elders The new year has arrived. You probably wonder, there's still a month and a half till the new year. But the new year that I'm talking about is the Islamic New Year. And this Islamic New Year would be 1434. Last year was 1433, and this year is 1434. Today is the second day of this new Islamic year. The time really flies by. In such a short time, this entire year, has gone by, that if we look back on the first day of 1433, and then we look at today, the second day of 1434, it really doesn't feel like it has been a full year since that time. And that compels us to reflect on how we spent this whole year of our life. A whole year of our life is gone. In our age, we have grown older. In our time, we have lost one year. And in our destination, in, in our death, we have become closer. If our life is 60 years in this world, and now we have become 55, we are even closer to our death. We are even closer to meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So now, this compels us to think and reflect. Are we ready to meet with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with whatever we have now? Whatever we have done in the past, in the 20 years of our life, or 30 years of our life, or 50 years of our life, or 70 years of our life, all that we have already done the time that Allah has already given to us in this life, that we have already used, that we have
have already spent. From that time, from that life, what do we have that we can present to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Is it something that we will be honored to present to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Or is it something that we will be ashamed to present to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? If it is something in our assets, in our treasure, that we will be honored to present to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then we must thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for giving us the ability to do what pleases Him. And if unfortunately we have something that we would be ashamed to present to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then we can still ask for forgiveness. We can still repent. We can still make tawbah. The gate of tawbah, the door of tawbah is still open. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is still waiting. You know when a human being does something wrong, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala waits. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala waits for that person to repent. Because Allah loves that person so much, each and every single one of us, that Allah wants us to erase that bad deed, that mistake from our record. Once we have repented to Allah, once we have made tawbah, then that has been erased forever from the record. To the extent that certain ahadith of Rasulullah say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even makes that spot where the sin was committed, forget it. Because even the spot where the sin is committed will testify on the Day of Judgment, will be a witness against us. On the Day of Judgment, not only our own body parts, not only our own organs will testify against ourselves, our tongue, our hands, our eyes, our ears, our feet, they will testify against us. يَوْمَ تَشْهَدُوا عَلَيْهِمْ أَلْسِنَتُهُمْ وَأَيْدِيهِمْ وَأَرْجُلُهُمْ بِمَا كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ On that day, their tongues and their hands and their feet will testify against them over the actions, over the evil actions that they used to commit. So our own hands, our own tongues, our own feet will testify against ourselves. In this world, we can relax and we can be assured that at least my own tongue will not speak against me. My own hands will not testify against me. My own feet will not testify against me. At least they are with me. They will be in my favor in this world. But in that world, on the Day of Judgment, no. On the Day of Judgment, you cannot rely on these. Because Allah will tell, Allah will command the tongue to speak, Allah will command the hands to speak, Allah will command the feet to speak. When this ayah was revealed, some Sahaba, Ridwanullahi alayhi majma'een, they asked the common question, they said, Ya Rasulullah, how is it possible that the hand will speak, that the feet will speak? How can the hands talk? How can the feet talk? Because they don't have the ability to speak, to communicate. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that whoever gave the ability to tongue to speak, same Creator will give the ability to these organs, these parts to speak as well. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the Quran that these parts, 
there, there will be question. So they will say, Qalu Allahu Lali kulla shay. That the one who gave everything the power to speak gave us the power to speak as well. So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives someone, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts the tawbah of a person, then he does not only remove that evil deed from the record of that person forever, that never comes back. But he also makes that spot on earth forget the, the witnessing of the witnessing of sin or the witnessing of crime. So there's no evidence left at that time. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala erases all evidence, removes all evidence of any sin committed once the person has made tawbah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So on this day of the new year, we need to reflect. And we need to make a strategy on moving forward with this time that Allah has given us. This whole year that's before us, the year 1434 of Islamic calendar, what are we going to do in that year? From this day, we should make a commitment to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we will do our best to do all those things that please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we will do our best to avoid and refrain from all those things that invite the wrath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that displease Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in any way whatsoever. And most importantly, the Quran, the most precious gift that Allah has given to us. There are six rights of Quran that we should all be aware of and we should make a commitment to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we will do our best to fulfill these six rights of Quran. Those six rights of Quran are these. Number one, we believe in it. Number two, we honor it. Number three, we read it. We recite it. Number four, we understand it. Number five, we practice it. Number six, we propagate it. We spread it. These are the six rights of Quran that we need to keep in mind and we need to remind ourselves and we need to continue reminding ourselves. Because there's something natural with us and that is we forget. And the best way, the best remedy of forgetfulness is a reminder. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Quran, وَذَكِّرْ And remind them, فَإِنَّ الذِّكْرَى تَنْفَعُ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ Because a reminder does benefit the believers. When believers are reminded, when someone is reminded that this is due, this is something that we have to do, that this is something that we must do, then that reminder serves the benefit to the believers. So we need to remember these things. Let me explain in a little detail these six rights of the Qur'an. The first right is that we believe in the Qur'an. Alhamdulillah, as Muslims, we already believe in the Qur'an. But there is a need to strengthen that belief. There is a need to deepen that belief. How do we believe in the Quran? In which ways do we believe in the Quran? So we need to believe in the Quran the way Rasulullah believed in it and the way his noble companions believed in it. If 
we believe in the Quran not the way Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam believed in it, and not the way the Sahaba, his noble companions, believed in it, then what we believe is not the belief of the of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Then our belief in the Quran is not acceptable. We have to believe the way Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam believed, and the way. The noble companions of the Allah and the The Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in Surah Al Baqarah that when the hypocrites were asked to believe in Islam, in Quran, in Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, wa idha qilalahum aminu, when it was said to them, believe, accept the faith. In Allah, in Quran, in the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, قالوا أنؤمن كما آمن السفهاء. So they used to say in response, should we believe the way these fools believe? So they called Sahaba رضوان الله عليهم أجمعين. They called the noble companions of the Allah عنهم أجمعين. Fools. They said, do we need to believe in Quran, in Islam, in the Prophet Muhammad, the way these fools believe? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rejected them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala approved the way the noble companions of the Allah believed in Quran and rejected the way the fool, the, the true fools. The hypocrites believed in Quran. Hypocrites also believed in the Quran, but Allah Subhanahu wa Taala did not approve that belief in Quran. So we need to believe in the Quran the way Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam believed, and the way noble companions of the Allah believed. We need to believe in every word of the Quran, in every ayah of the Quran, in every verse of the Quran. In every promise of the Quran, all the promises that Allah has made in Quran, we need to understand that the Quran is the true word of Allah, is the literal speech of Allah. The Quran was not created. The Quran is not a creation. It is not makhluq. Because Quran is an attribute of Allah. Quran is the speech of Allah. Quran is the word of Allah. Wa inna al-Quran kalam Allah. Quran is the speech of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. So every word of it, every sentence, every phrase, every ayah of the entire Quran is as true as Surah Al-Fatiha and Surah Al-Nas. We need to believe in every promise of the Quran, and every description of the Quran, every story of the Quran, every lesson of the Quran, without any hesitation and without any doubt. If someday we we see some apparent contradiction or confusion between what Quran say and between a fact. Or a historic fact, or a scientific fact, we need to lower our guards, and we need to surrender. We need to say that what Quran has said is true. Maybe we did not fathom it. It is not possible to fathom and understand everything that Quran has said, because in Quran there are some words and there are some statements. That are only known to Allah and His Messenger, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and to those to whom He has disclosed. Allah subhanahu wa taala said in Surah Al Imran, "Huwa aladhi anzala alayka al kitab." It is Allah who revealed to you the book, the Quran. Minhu ayatun muhkamat. In this Quran, there are those verses which are solid and which are clear. You cannot interpret it the way you want to. The meaning is very clear. When Allah says, 
Allahu la ilaha illa hu. Allah is the one there is nerdy, there's none worthy of worship. When Allah says, Qul hu Allahu ahad, say that Allah is one. There's these verses and similar verses are straightforward. There, there is nothing that anyone can do to misinterpret these verses. So Allah says, Minhu ayatun muhkamat. There are verses in Quran, most different, which are solid and straightforward. These are the core verses of Quran. These are the verses on which our Iman depends. So, verses like these, if we doubt, then our Iman is in doubt. Then our belief is in doubt. So, we have to believe in every word of it. There are also those verses, the meaning of which is not clearly explained in Quran and not clearly explained by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And those are the verses Allah says, mutashabiha. Those are the resembling verses. Their meanings resemble, their, their words resemble. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, هُوَ الَّذِي أَنزَلَ عَلَيْكَ الْكِتَابِ مِنْهُ آيَاتٌ مُحْكَمَاتٌ هُنَّ أُمُّ الْكِتَابِ وَأُوْهَرُ مُتَشَابِهَاتٌ فَأَمَّا الَّذِينَ فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ زَيْغٌ فَيَتَّبِعُونَ مَا تَشَابَهَ مِنْهُ Those in whose hearts is crookedness and a desire to misguide, they will try to seek the meaning of these verses. They have, they're not seeking the truth. They're not seeking any evidence of truth, but they are seeking points which they can spread as a confusion, as a source of misguidance. So Allah says, فَأَمَّا الَّذِينَ فِي قُرُوبِهِمْ زَيْبٌ فَيَتَّبِعُونَ مَا تَشَابَهَ مِنْهُ بْتِغَاءَ الْفِتْنَةِ They are seeking fitna. They are seeking problem. They just want to create problems in the community. They just want to create problems in the society. وَبْتِغَاءَ الْتَأْوِيلِ And seeking, the seeking what cannot be achieved. وَمَا يَعْلَمُ تَأْوِيلَهُ إِنْ اللَّهِ Allah says, only and only Allah knows the true interpretation of those words and those verses. And those were solid in their knowledge, in their foundation of deen, in their ilm, those who are strong, well versed. What do they say? When verses like these come up and a debate is going on, they say, Aman Nabi. We believe in it. The way it is, the way it is mentioned in Quran, the way it is stated by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Quran, we believe in it wholeheartedly. Kullum min indi Rabbina. All of it is from our Rabb. Every word of it, every letter of it, is all from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Kullum min indi Rabbina. All of the Quran is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nothing has been added to the Quran. Nothing has been missing from the Quran. The Quran is complete the way it was revealed to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And it is in our hands the way it is preserved in the preserved tablet. Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has preserved the Quran in Lawh al mahfud the preserved tablet in the seventh heaven. This, the way it is there, the, that is the same way we have the Quran here in our hands. And it is an honor for every single believer to hold the Quran in his hands. We should realize what a great honor Allah has bestowed upon us that we are able to hold the Quran in our hands. It is the Quran that is revered and respected and honored by every single creature in this universe, not just the humans. 
But every single living being in this universe respects the Quran. Because this is the word of Allah. This is the speech of Allah. So, the number two, the second right of the Quran is that we honor it. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in one hadith, خَيْرُكُمْ مَنْ تَعَلَّمَ الْقُرْآنَ وَعَلَّمَ The best of you are those who teach the Quran and learn it. The learner and the teacher of the Quran are both the best of all human beings. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala introduced himself as the teacher of the Quran. If you open Surah Al-Rahman, the first word, the first ayah of Surah Al-Rahman, Allah says, Ar-Rahman, the most merciful, the most kind. Ar-Rahman, Allam al-Quran. Ar-Rahman, Allah is the one, Rahman is the one who taught the Quran. So Allah introduced himself as the teacher of the Quran. And Allah is the true teacher of the Quran. It is Allah who taught us the Quran, gave us the ability to learn the Quran, read the Quran, and understand the Quran. So we need to believe in the Quran the way our Prophet and his noble companion believed in it. And we need to honor the Quran and respect the Quran. We should not, we should not put our feet towards the Quran. If the Quran is if the Quran is at the same level, we should not put our feet towards the Quran. We should not put the Quran where we sit. And we should not take the Quran to the bathroom, to the toilet. Respect the Quran because this is the word of Allah. This is the speech of Allah. And we should not touch it unless we are in the state of purity. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah al waqiah لَا يَمَسُّهُ إِلَّا الْمُطَهَّرُونَ Only those who are pure, they touch the Qur'an. And the, the, the third right is that we read it. We read it because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala demands from us reading of Qur'an. And it was one of the responsibilities of Rasulullah to recite the Qur'an unto people. And when the Qur'an is recited, it has an effect on our body and our soul and on our, on our heart. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, إِنَّمَ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ الَّذِينَ يَا ذِكِرَ اللَّهِ وَجِدَتْ قُلُوبُهُمْ Those who believe in Allah, those who are true believers in Allah, when Allah is mentioned before them, then their hearts are taken by awe. وَإِذَا تُلِيَتْ عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتُهُ زَادَتْهُمْ إِيمَانًا and when the verses of Quran are recited unto them, their iman increases. And they place their trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I would ask everyone, inshallah, to remember so many of our brothers and sisters in so many places throughout the world, in so many different problems, life-threatening problems in Gaza, in Syria, in Burma, in Afghanistan, and so many other places. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give them relief. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help them. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy on them. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala strengthen all of them. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala take them out of the trouble and distress and the life-threatening all that they are facing. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help them, all of them. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala assist them. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala weaken the enemy. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala strengthen all, all those who believe in Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam.